Hello, and welcome to our show, For the Love of Animals. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm Darlene Pigford. And I'm Greg Bauer. We'd like to tell our viewers of a couple of upcoming shows that will be of interest to them. One on talking about the various laws and ordinances about uh, animals in McCracken County and in the city of Paducah. And another one is one that I think you'll really enjoy called my favorite things. And we're going to leave that a little, little bit of surprise for you as to what's involved. Well, what's on tap for today, darling? Well, first, hint, Oprah will have nothing on us, <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Greg, this will be part one of part two of emergency first aid for cats. Okay. And you might want to get a paper and pencil because we've got lots of valuable information for you today. Greg? Please introduce our guest. I'll be happy to, Darlene. We're very pleased to have with us this afternoon Dr. Jason Rogers from Lone Oak Animal Clinic. And uh, we'd like to welcome you, Jason. This so afternoon. glad you're here. Glad you could take time out from your busy schedule. Thanks. Why don't we start, first of all, Jason, tell us about that little group of critters that you have at your home. I've got uh, three dogs. I've got one that's a, a pointer that just loves to run. That's his favorite things, always going. Um, a little Yorkshire Terrier that stays in the house, mm -hmm. and I have an American Bulldog that lives with my parents most of the time. <laughs> okay. okay. And what is our guest right here? <laughs> this is our, we're going to use this little kitty as our sampler to show how to do CPR and chest compressions and things today. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think any of my cats would have sat, uh, lo you know, long enough through this show. So we, we are, we, vol we uh, found a, a substitute. Right. We'd like to thank Donna Groves for that. That's right. <laughs> Jason, let's start off uh, with the uh, first aid. What should be in my pet emergency first aid kit? Some of the things that you need to have on hand. One, you have some bandage material for any kind of lacerations. You can use the bandage material to stabilize a fracture until you can get to your veterinarian. Okay. Um, baited iron is good to have. You can get that at Walmart uh, or any pharmacy used to clean wounds, things like that to help cut down on the bacteria in wounds. Um, Neosporin works wonderful to keep wounds moist to help okay. keep the tissue from drying out. Also has put some antibiotic in the the area that's affected. Um, it'll also keep dirt. The, the moisture will trap things to keep it a little bit cleaner so when you get to your vet it's easier to take care of. Okay. Um, super glue works really well for small lacerations. We use tissue glue a lot which is basically the same thing as super glue oh, okay. to kind of close small wounds until you can get into your uh -huh. veterinarian. Okay. Benadryl is a good medication to have. Benadryl is wonderful for any kind of reactions whether it's a insect bite um, bee sting, anything like that. Uh, syrup of Ipecac is some medication that you can get over the counter to make animals vomit in right, case we eat something. Tell, run that one through me again. Syrup of Ipecac. Okay. All right. um, you can also use hydrogen peroxide to okay. make an animal vomit if we've eaten okay. something that we need to get out of our, our system. Mm -hmm. You always need to contact your veterinarian before you make them vomit because there are some toxins and things that we don't want to make them vomit. We want to dilute those out. Okay. Okay. It sound, that sounds like the kind of things we might find on our family medicine chest, except for super glue. I'm not sure about <laughs> that one. <laughs> it's all pretty much the same. I mean, we can use mm -hmm. uh, things that we use on us. Most of the time, we can use on on animals. Okay. And on this first aid kit, I imagine one of the things I would need is at at my dis easy disposal is the telephone number of my vet, right? Your veterinarian is very important and. You know, have that where you can reach it easily. Another number would be poison control. And okay. you can use, there's a poison control in the emergency section of the phone book. It's okay. a human emergency number, but they can help us a lot of times with animals. Mm -hmm. If they can't, if they don't have any studies, then we can call some of the universities and things for their um, poison control centers. Okay. And with some of the medications you were talking about, we would need to know the weight of our animal, our, our cat, before administering any, in other words, we still need the advice of a veterinarian right. of how much right. uh, needed to be d yeah. uh, given in an emergency. Right. Call and, and check and make sure. The Benadryl is about a milligram per pound. So okay. a six pound cat could get a fourth of a 25 milligram tablet, 10 pound cat could get a half. Okay. Um, okay. The syrup of Ipecac is about um, a teaspoon per three pounds. So and that's to make 
an animal vomit if we need to, but again, if, we have mm -hmm. to find out, you know, is this a toxin that we want to make them vomit or do we need to treat another way? Okay, well, I tell you what, what if I come across my cat and my cat is having trouble breathing? What do I do? Okay, one, observe how we're breathing. You know, are we, are we gagging, coughing, trying to get something up like we're more choking? Okay. Or is it a problem deeper where we're panting real hard and we just can't calm down? Um, the first thing to do is just use a, a stick or a pencil, something to pull the tongue down. Make sure we don't have any kind of obstruction mm -hmm. in the mouth itself. Okay. Don't use your fingers because if these guys are, are struggling, <laughs> yes. they don't know. Yes. Right. And their teeth have so much bacteria on there that we can ca cause some major infections with us if we get bit. So right. use something to just make sure the airway is open. Um, after that, while you're doing this, have someone call the vet or, or get to the phone just to make sure we're open first. On there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what if it's something like I'm unsuspicious of a hairball? Okay. The with that again, looking in the mouth to make okay. sure it's not where we can get it out. On okay. There. Um, other things that you can do if you think it's something in the throat, you can. I want to use our little buddy okay. here. Just tilt the head down and you can just slightly tap on the chest if tap anything the is in there to increase that pressure to help them cough something up if they can. On okay, there. well, let's take a break now and have a happy tale about Augie Golden. Hello, my name is Augie Golden and I am a six-year-old black lab. I was adopted by Dr. Jimmy Golden when I was about 12 weeks old. I am now employed by the Lone Oak Animal Clinic, where my responsibilities include official greeter, head of security, and chief blood donor. This position has given me the financial security to have my own pickup truck and bass boat. My hobbies include fishing and catching little green furry things that can be found on tennis courts. I have a wonderful forever home, thanks to Jimmy. Well, that was a very interesting happy tale, I think, about Augie. And we understand that uh, he's your greeter and he's also financially secure. <laughs> How does a dog happen to get that situation, Jason? <laughs> Augie has it made. She has the life of Riley. She uh -huh. comes to work every day, doesn't do a whole lot, but she, she keeps everybody company when she's there. Uh -huh. Well, she's the first happy tale that we know of that has a bass boat and a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> Now understand, she's also a blood donor at your clinic. She is. We use Augie um, whenever we have to have a transfusion for whatever reason. She is the lucky one to donate for us. That's where the bass boat comes in. Oh, she, oh. Needs, she needs to relax to help revive herself. Oh, well, okay, I see. <laughs> what what a, an interesting uh, story. Uh, Greg, we also now have another happy tale uh, about JJ and a rubber band. Oh. You will love this one also. Hi, my name's JJ and I'm a male three-year-old shepherd mix. I don't remember much about my early life, but someone took me to the Lone Oak Animal Clinic when I was about eight weeks old and the clinic staff took me in. I was very thin and scared because I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Someone had put a rubber band around my head and it hurt a lot. The staff cut the rubber band off my head and I began to feel better immediately. The people at the clinic were very loving to me and fed me, but this didn't seem like a permanent home. It wasn't long before one of the workers at the clinic took me home, and then I realized how lucky I was. Today, I'm happy and have a wonderful forever home, thanks to the people at the Lone Oak Animal Clinic. We hope you enjoyed that happy tale about JJ, and kind of unusual for, to have found uh, a cat coming in with a, or dog, excuse me, with a rubber band around his head. That had to be very, very <sighs> painful. Oh, absolutely. We'd like to turn back to our discussion now with Jason Rogers. This is part one of First Aid for Cats, and we were talking about the respiratory system. Can we follow up on that, Jason, with a little bit about uh, what people may know as the ABCs? Would you explain that to us, please? Okay. ABC stands for airway, breathing, and circulation. Okay. Um, what we do with those, we kind of triage and find out what is going on with the animal so we okay. know what we need to do. Um, the A stands for airway. The main thing we can do there is just assess for airway obstruction. Again, like mm -hmm. we talked about earlier, looking in the mouth, you can just kind of hold, pull back on the head and their jaw will drop as you pull that back. And then you can get down in the mouth to make sure that there's nothing blocking the upper airway. 
Um, the breathing is a little harder to do at home because we can't get a good seal like with people when they do CPR to get good air down into the lungs. So mm -hmm. we kind of use the C the circulation to go along with our breathing when we do chest compressions to push the, the blood out of the heart for the circulation. We also change the pressure in the chest so the animal can take in some air with that. You can try to, you know, blow to get some air down in the lungs, but you don't do very well with animals because, again, we can't get that uh -huh. seal right. like we can in humans. Um, to do CPR, you want to um, do chest compressions at about 80 to 120 beats per minute to okay. try to keep circulation up. And what we're trying to do there is get enough blood to supply the brain, to supply the heart, to keep the vital organs happy, as happy okay. as we can. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately in animals, if an animal has to have CPR performed, a lot of them don't make it through on there. Um, simply because most animals, if they get to that point, it's usually a, a bad disease that's been going on that just has finally mm -hmm. caught up with the animal on there. But what you do for the chest compressions, have these guys laying on their side, and the cats are small, so you see in the movies everybody's putting all their weight, putting a lot of pressure. We don't have to do that because they're so small. We just want to come right behind their front legs, kind of where their elbow comes in contact with their chest. And again, we want to compress at about 80 to 20 or 120 beats per minute on there to try to get that blood flow out. Okay. Does it make a difference which side the cat is laying on? It does not because they're, okay. they're so thin, you're going to be able to get in either way. Their heart sets a little more on the left side, but it's not going to matter okay. in that situation. Something else you can do to kind of help some is have someone compress the belly, that abdomen, when you relax the heart. And what that does, a lot of the veins are back in the belly, so blood pulls up in there. So if we can, when we relax the heart, push on the abdomen that pushes some of that blood up to the heart so we can get a little more out in there. Okay. Um, the first thing that we would do as soon as we got to a clinic then is get a tracheal tube in so we can then oxygenate for them to help them breathe, a get more oxygen to satisfy mm -hmm. the tissues. Do you have any suggestions about how you, you know, if a cat is in distress, it may not want it to be handled mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions for our viewers about how to safely handle a sick cat? very carefully. <laughs> <There. It's, laughs> exactly. Cats yeah. are, are tough and what you have to do sometimes is if you can just scruff right behind their neck and it's it seems a little aggressive but you have to watch out for yourself. You right. have to be careful yeah. and so that's not going to hurt the animal. They've got enough skin. That way you can control their head. You can keep them from turning around and biting. The other thing, they have four weapons uh, yes. at the, yeah. their <laughs> feet. So you can also, after you scruff the animal, you can grab just above the, the feet uh -huh. and kind of stretch them out. And that way you can get keep control of them to do what you need to do. Now, if an animal is in respiratory distress or, or panting, you have to be careful because that stress can be enough to cause more damage. So, you know, worry about yourself first. Try to get them sedate or calm down enough calm to down. where you can get mm -hmm. them in a box or something to uh, get them to your clinic. A, a good soothing voice is a big help there. That helps. Talking to them, an animal that is having a seizure or anything, a lot of times you can just pet them, talk to them, calm them down, and they'll come out of the seizure on their own. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's uh, very good to know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, another problem area is bite wounds. Mm -hmm. How do we, what do we do? Our, our animal has gotten bitten from whatever source. What do we do about bite wounds? Depending on what it is, if it's another cat um, or a dog, the main thing is going to be getting some antibiotics. Again, okay. because their, their mouths are so dirty and they'll make a small puncture wound. They'll seed bacteria underneath the skin. The skin seals over and then a few days later you develop a big abscess. On there. Um, so the big thing is getting some antibiotics. Now, if we're talking about more of a snake bite, um, or something like that that's more toxic, um, then the big thing you'd start with is getting some antihistamines in, the Benadryl that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. um, to help stop any kind of a reaction that we may have. Snake bites can be serious. We don't see snake bites that often in cats. Oh, uh, really? We see them a lot in dogs, but not that often in cats. I think they're a little sharper. They can get away a little bit quicker, <laughs> not, not messing around as much. But um, with that, we need, a lot of times, have to have fluids going to keep us from getting going into shock and things like that. Oh, okay. Well, that that's very very good to know. Yeah. 
Ann, what, what, what would I do um, if, if I found a, 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 there's an accident on the side of the road and I, I find a cat? What's the best way for me to get it to the vet? Any suggestions? Just like we talked about, if you can catch and get into a box. Get him into the, a box. the big thing. Now, if we're, we're coming, if we're laid out on our side and we can't, you may make a stretcher out of something, whether it's cardboard, anything to keep us as flat as possible. Um, that way, if we have any broken limbs, they're not going to be moving around much. We can okay. keep them kind of steady. No. You can try to splint with just some gauze and a piece of cardboard or anything to kind of keep that limb as stable as possible on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well... Let's take another break from this very interesting discussion, and we have now a favorite, uh, another favorite section. We want to now move to a poem by Pam Wells, The Miracle of Love. A miracle of love. Caring hands reach out to stroke the injured kitty's head, whispering gentle words to calm. Easy, girl, he said. Familiar arms lift up the cat as she struggles in the rain. With pleading eyes, Allie mews so soft for help to ease her pain. As Ed puts his cat onto the porch, he bows his head in prayer. Lord, guide my hands and bless our Allie and please keep her in your care. Help me please to heal our girl with skill and strength from you. Knowing she's a special friend, so loyal and so true. Be calm, sweet Allie, and lie real still as I warm you up from the rain's damp chill. Then the pinkest tongue sneaks out to touch her master's healing hands. Slowly and with growing strength, her trembling body stands. It's a miracle of love to help save and to mend the greatest gift that we can give to aid our helpless friend. We hope you've enjoyed that uh, poem by Pam. And you know, as you know, she's a regular feature on our show with, the, with her poems. If you're interested in getting a copy of that poem or in, interested in some of the work that Pam does, you can contact her in two ways, by telephone at 270-575-3822 or at petlix at yahoo.com. And so if you're interested in that, contact Pam for a copy of it. We're, as we return back to our programming. We have another emergency situation. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to have with us Donna Groves today, who is treasurer for Project Hope over in Metropolis, who wants to talk for a few moments about a special campaign that she's working on. Welcome, Hi. Donna. Thank you. I appreciate the offer to be here. We are continuing with our uh, fundraising campaign, trying to raise money for the no-kill shelter over in Metropolis. We keep the animals as long as it takes. And part of what we're doing is offering tiles for what we're calling our Paw Prince Pathway. The tiles can be uh, purchased in memory of an animal that you've had in your life at some point that's passed on or even one that's living now. They're $25 a piece. And I have a picture of uh, a doggy that's a <laughs> fond memory of yours, Maggie yes. May. That's Maggie yes. May. And uh, I brought the picture that you provided me. And if you give me a picture, that, that really helps uh -huh. to, to capture what the animal mm -hmm. looks like. And the other tile I brought is of Peppy, which was my kitty. And... Uh, I wanted to remember him with that. So. Okay. And M Maggie May wrote on our pontoon every time, or most every time that that pontoon <laughs> went out. So I guess this is the second yeah. dog, I mean, that has a boat. Not a bass boat. She had a party <laughs> pontoon boat. <laughs> a party girl. Yeah, yeah, she was a party girl. <laughs> and, and if our folks are interested in, in purchasing one of the plaques and helping out Project Hope, and not only with that, uh, they can donate, of course, the $25 mm -hmm. or more. Or more. Or more. <laughs> <laughs> and or if they just would like to make a contribution in general to help Project Hope. Donna, how can they do that? Well, our phone number to Project Hope 618-524-8939 okay. or you can go on the web. We have a, a website www.projecthopeanimalshelter.com. Okay. Okay. And if I wanted to mail a contribution, PO Box 125 Metropolis, Illinois. 62960. All right. Okay. So uh, uh, we, we do hope that you'll get many contributions. Yes, and we understand the campaign is going well. It is. It is. We've got a lot of tiles. We're going to do one entire wall in, inside the shelter. Oh. So they'll be there for a long time to come. Tell us about your roof. 
our roof is in shambles. <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> some of the ceiling tiles are actually falling in because of the roof, uh, and we need to, to get enough money to get that roof mm -hmm. fixed. Uh, like I say, it's their home for as many years as it takes to find them a home, so we mm -hmm. want them to be happy and safe and comfortable, so mm -hmm. we, we kind of need a roof. Right, yeah. <laughs> and you, and you would if be it le excuse me, if it leaks, you can't have a sick room, right. so you can't quarantine any animals mm -hmm. to control, you know, uh, some problem situations, so right. it's a little more than just having a roof over it's, your head, it's, isn't it? It is. It's very important that we get that roof uh, put back on mm -hmm. and, and in a good shape, because right now, we don't have a quarantine room to keep the cats uh, if they get separate. A s separate if they get sick from another. You don't want it to right. to run rampant um, or or the dogs. Wonderful. And you're also willing to accept donation of materials. Oh, we'll accept donations, <laughs> and labor, also of human labor. Exactly. <laughs> we we would love to talk with anybody who would like to help us. Well. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Donna. We appreciate it and wish you the very best of luck with the campaign, and we'll be talking to you later about it. Thank and you. And you did a wonderful job with Maggie Yes, May. you did. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'd also like to remind our viewers about another feature of our program called Forget Me Not. We are trying to remember uh, an animal that is deceased with a little story like a happy tale, and all we ask you to do is to send us that information and a check to your favorite uh, animal welfare organization. I'd just like to remind you that there are quite a few local organizations, for example, Project Hope No Kill Animal Shelter, there's LBL Rescue Creatures Great and Small, there's Four Rivers Bird Rescue, there's Four Rivers Search, Rescue and Recovery, and any of these organizations would be worthy and, of your donation. And also In His Hands Humane Society, too. Which is a spay-neuter group right. that uh, we hope one day and, will come to the Paducah area. And this is something, uh, it's a little different than what Donna's talking about here, but it, it kind of expands the idea just a little bit. And if you are interested in participating, we do need a picture. You can send a check and information to 37, um, excuse me, to uh, Forget Me Not, 3734 Buyer Lane, Paducah, Kentucky, 42001. So these two programs are, are designed to complement each other, not compete with each other. We'd love to have you can work with both of them. We hope that you'll be able to participate in both of the two campaigns that we just talked about. Jason, returning to our discussion on first aid to, for cats, another trauma situation is the problem potentially of shock. What is shock? How do you recognize it in a cat and what do you do about it? Shock is the result of trauma in, in this situation and what happens, the animal's body, whenever it goes into shock for whatever reason, tries to preserve the organs that it has to have to live. The okay. brain, the heart, the intestinal tract, things like that. So what happens, the vessels, the blood vessels to those areas will dilate so we can get more blood going to those. Okay. The vessels to the extremities, to the ears, to the feet, uh, things that we don't have to have to, to live will constrict. So we're taking what blood that we have and keeping it central, keeping it where we have to have it. Um, ways to, to see that, typically the animal's heart rate will go up with shock because the heart's trying to get enough blood out everywhere. So its response is to speed up, to try to pump okay. more out. Uh, again, we talked about heart rate when we're doing CPR of 80 to 120 beats per minute. Um, normal cat heart rate may be up to 200 on there. So if, if that heart rate is so fast that you can't count it, that's a okay. sign that we'll see with shock some. Their mucous membranes, if you lift up their, their gums on the animal, they'll be kind of bluish or, or pale in color. Um, their body temperature a lot of times will drop again because of that constriction of the outside vessels. We're not getting blood supply to keep the body warm there. So um, animals in shock generally are, um, they can be semi-comatose. They'll just be laying on their side not moving around much. Um, the only thing that you can do for shock is get them to your veterinarian because mm -hmm. you have to have some medications to stabilize all the cells, all the tissues in the body, um, and fluid to increase blood pressure, mm -hmm. to get that blood volume back up, to try to get everything happy. Um, and it's critical that we get in fairly rapidly to get that in okay. there. Okay. Um, Jason, in our last couple of minutes here, what 
key points would you like our viewers to remember about emergency first aid for cats? One of the big things is is have a good relationship with your veterinarian and, and okay. know that you can get in touch with them because mm -hmm. most of these things we have to get in quickly, especially the traumas with hit by cars. Um, some fight wounds, depending on how bad they are, shock like we just talked about. We've got to get medications in to stabilize the animal to pull them through. Mm -hmm. um, have the phone numbers handy. Have the poison control handy. Like I say, even though it's a human poison control, they can give us a lot of information on studies that have been done in animals okay. for different things. Um, and your first aid kit. You, know, you can do so much by just keeping wounds covered, getting the triple antibiotic ointment in to try to prevent debris from getting down in the wounds. Um, and keeping them covered just so they can be as clean as possible when they get to the veterinarian. We'd like to thank our guest today, Jason Rogers, for uh, being with us. And a reminder to the viewers that this is part one of First Aid for Cats, and we'll be uh, doing part two before too long. But Jason, we'd like to thank you so much today for sharing some time with us, and we're looking forward to part two with it. Thank so, you so much for coming, Jason, and giving us this valuable information. So, thank you for having me. I enjoyed okay. it. So I think in closing, well, Arlene. I have a one oh. reminder. Excuse me? I have a resource <laughs> for our guests. Okay. For our viewers, excuse me. Pet First Aid for Cats, which they can get from Apogee Entertainment, or call 1-800-210. 5700. But I, I think part one and part two probably uh, is, is just as good. But oh, this absolutely. does make absolutely. a nice gift. It makes yes. a nice reference for you to have. It is a DVD. So now, Greg, in closing. In closing, thank you. We'll get back to that. Uh, I'm Darlene Pigford. And I'm Greg Bauer. And saying to you, give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time.